Mayuresh Joshi as well on the show with us. Mayuresh, hi, afternoon. Um, what is it that you've been doing in the market? Any interesting buying opportunities or even profit taking perhaps? <laughs> afternoon, Aisha. No, I think we are being a little bit more selective as far as the broader markets are concerned. Uh, and therefore, uh, uh, stock additions um, are being picked very, very carefully. Having said that, uh, Nesco is something that uh, the team is liking at markets with India. Obviously, I think a lot of emphasis that we lay upon is how earnings are expected to grow, which is reflected through our EPS ratings. Uh, and a large part of the expectations in terms of Nesco's earnings uh, should be relatively stable uh, over the next few quarters and over the next couple of years as well. Uh, uh, the added optionality, Aisha, that comes through for Nesco, considering their two core businesses, uh, which is the Bombay Exhibition Center and their IT business parts, uh, is the availability of space. Uh, so they've just utilized almost 20 odd percent for both of these business segments. Uh, and as they start utilizing more, uh, and as they explore the opportunities that come through the remainder of the 80% space uh, by whatever means or options that are available to them, uh, uh, I think there is a huge amount of optionality that happens uh, in a large land staff area like Mumbai. Yeah. The second aspect, obviously, the incubator and the food business uh, has uh, picked up uh, quite meaningfully in terms of the EBIT performance. And therefore, I think the consolidated numbers uh, should be stacked up relatively better over the next few quarters. Uh, they've got almost 1,500, 1,600 crores worth of cash onto this books. Uh, so they can also grow organically, or in fact, even have a larger amount of dividend payouts uh, if these opportunities do not uh, come by. And therefore, I think uh, EPS ratings, RS rating, the institution holding, the parameters that we see in uh, at markets pretend as far as cancel are concerned, are probably getting fulfilled. So yeah, Nesco is one interesting idea that we like at this. Mayuresh, what's your view on power? So a lot of PSUs have come off. Power has managed to stay afloat. But if you look at the latest electricity data, which has come out for the consumption of the month of August, it wasn't that great. There was actually a drop of almost 5%. And that's because of uh, the rainfall and the seasonal issues as well. Would you book out your profits out of some of the profit, uh, out, out of some of the uh, you know power names or continue to stay invested? Anisha, no, I think the high-flying names, specifically the power financing companies as an example, PFC, REC. Yes, there is a huge amount of opportunity as far as uh, the financing needs are concerned because you are expected to see renewables uh, probably expand uh, three times from 180 gigawatts to almost 500 gigawatts, uh, which is the set target by the government by 2032. And therefore, I think uh, financing towards renewable projects, whether it's PLC, RDC, Canada, uh, I think these companies are going to stay in focus. Uh, they've also got a decent amount of dividend yield supporting them. Uh, asset quality pressures are largely behind them with the resolutions that have been done. And since they largely lend to government entities, I think the scope of default remains very, very minimal. However, I think the kind of runoff that we've probably seen in these stocks, uh, some element of profit booking or partially booking some profits uh, is not a bad idea. But overall, as a space, Anisha, I think uh, our belief still lies with the fact uh, that structurally, tailwind still continue to favor power as a sector. And therefore, I think uh, selectively, both generators, uh, transmitters, as well as EPC players uh, should continue to reap the benefit in terms of this structural tailwind. Uh, obviously, how tariffs will play out is going to be extremely critical as renewables increase their share of power within the overall basket. Uh, but I think it's going to be more a story as more capacity is coming in terms of uh, operating leverage with better volume being played through uh, with the generators um, and the transmitters as well. I think this space should remain in focus. So I think power financiers, uh, some element of profit booking is not a bad idea. Uh, some of the generators like a Tata Power or a CESC on declines uh, is not a bad idea to accumulate as well. And you can also look at a few of these EPC players uh, because these EPC players are probably going to benefit not just in terms of the incremental orders that can come through, but also in terms of the O&M contracts that can probably come through. Right, okay, that's that on some of the power financiers. Uh, look at NCC, NBCC as well. They've backed a couple of orders. NCC, in fact, a sizable quantum of about almost 1,200-odd crore rupees. Uh, that's looking smart. That's their August um, update. And NBCC has bagged a work order worth about almost 183-odd crore rupees. And the stocks have been doing uh, pretty okay since. Mayuresh, uh, how much more opportunity in the entire infra theme, you think? So, Aisha, again, I think uh, we need to be a little bit more selective here. Yes, uh, there are a uh, lot of tailwinds coming through. The government is going with 11 lakh crore capex, uh, roads, railways, highways, ports. Uh, 
are going to come into humongous space. We're looking at metros uh, or metro lines coming in uh, key metros as well. And therefore, infrastructure investments um, are going to be on an accelerated mode. At some point of time, private capex, which has shown signs of green shoot, should also start emerging. Uh, but I think one idea that we like uh, at this juncture within this whole space is Penar Industries. Uh, our take is that uh, the company which has embarked on an expansion plan, they just commissioned the plant uh, a few weeks back. Uh, and our own take is uh, the expectations in terms of numbers stacking up, uh, both in terms of volumes picking up for the new plant and expectations in terms of both their Indian businesses as well as their U.S. subsidiary, the ascent business in the U.S. Uh, Ahesha is just uh, about gaining shape in terms of both orders as well as execution. And therefore, I think as these numbers start tacking, stacking up, for both the domestic business as well as the U.S. business, along with a very, very strong balance sheet that they possess. Uh, my own sense is that earnings should pick up quite meaningfully for uh, a company like Penar Industries. So I think uh, being very selective here as well, but Penar is something that we like at this time. Mayuresh, where within the oil and gas pack are you finding opportunities, if at all? So very interesting space, Aisha. And again, I think the expectations of upstream companies are uh, actually holding up their port. Uh, and might actually be a... Uh, base case scenario. Obviously, you've seen rent proof prices come off, uh, both in terms of what the OPEC output uh, estimates are expected to be and lower demand specifically from China and the rest of the globe, um, at least for the first half of this uh, calendar year. Uh, having said that, uh, the expectations, uh, if crude prices stay the way they are, uh, and improvement in terms of demand uh, uh, at a local scale, uh, what you're probably expecting to see is operating leverage getting played out. Because as prices stabilize, uh, uh, and large part of the volumes start coming through, specifically in the domestic context, uh, you will see some element in terms of stability. Uh, one aspect is that the GRMs have come up quite significantly. So I think the refining margins for OMCs uh, are obviously going to be under some sort of uh, pressure as we speak. Uh, and OMCs do not have uh, that many optionalities uh, like the Relhance probably has. And therefore, I think... Uh, Refining might come under pressure while marketing might probably hold out OMC. So there might be some element in terms of volatility of earnings uh, as far as downstream is concerned. Again, Petchem, uh, with Petchem products and pricing uh, being on the weaker side uh, with weaker deltas as well, uh, I think the Petchem side of the business might also remain a little bit subdued. Midstream companies might be on a better track, the Aisha, with expectations of transmission volumes holding up. And their um, absolute EBITDA holding up as well. Uh, so at this juncture, again, I think uh, upstream like ONGC with the dividend yield, Oil India have really done well. Uh, so anybody holding on can definitely hold on. Midstream companies uh, probably can be coming back in focus. So I think you should probably keep that on your watch list. Uh, companies like a Gale or even a Petro Metallic. Okay, that's uh, Gale, uh, Oil India. That's what my race is liking right now. Uh, let's also check in on IT, the big mover from all through last week. Uh, my race, are you seeing any opportunities for a longer term investment in IT, although the index is already at a live high? No, so I think most aspects are getting priced in Asia. So if you speak about uh, expectations of uh, order wins expected to come through on a steady state basis as we head into the second half of the financial year, that is one possibility that the street probably believes uh, should come through as the rate cut cycle uh, begins in the US. Uh, the second aspect, obviously, is the key sectors and segments uh, that our outsourcing companies serve. Uh, BFSI, retail, manufacturing uh, should show signs of green shoots as well, along with uh, some element of recovery that we are seeing in the European markets as well. So I think the key markets and key sectors uh, should start holding out uh, for IT companies. Uh, now, does that translate into significant orders, specifically for large cap companies uh, uh, and consistent order flows uh, going well into the second half as we speak, uh, and again, the next year as well? I think that remains to be a plausible opportunity that comes through, specifically in areas like cloud computing, AI, and within AI, generative AI. It has become the big, strong buzzword. Uh, so I think large IT companies uh, should see some element of progress coming through. But that is getting penciled in. Similarly, for mid-cap IT companies, the order flows have been very, very consistent. A lot of management commentaries uh, have pointed out that order flows will continue coming at a good pace. And therefore, I think the constant currency revenue growth uh, should continue at a decent pace as well. Uh, assuming and excluding the kind of wage hikes or salary hikes uh, and outsourcing costs, which had shot up. Uh, and there will be adjustments uh, in the next two quarters for most IT companies. Uh, EBIT margins are expected to remain far more stable as we speak. 
But even within the mid cap IT, e R and D company is an uh, example. KP IT so that I have moved up quite significantly. The latest also being Tata Alexa, which has moved significantly in the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, and a few of the other outsources within the mid cap IT space um, are where they're trading both in terms of late stage bases as we see and elevated valuation. So I think it's a bold rating uh, at, at our end. Uh, we continue holding stocks like an emphasis, uh, LTI, Mindtree into our global portfolios. Uh, but as a clear disclaimer, we've entered these stocks at par level. Mairesh just wanted to understand what is your own uh, sense. There you go. You know, that's really the scorecard so far when it comes to the sales numbers. But Mairesh, where is it that you still find value on the table from autos? Because they've had a really great run so far. Absolutely. No two is about it, Aisha. And again, two wheelers have been ruling the roost. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I think numbers from Bajaj Auto, uh, TVS Motors, uh, both in terms of volumes and uh, the, the demand for the new launches uh, have really stuck well in terms of uh, not just volumes playing out uh, nicely for them, but again, I think numbers playing out meaningfully as well. Uh, so I think uh, two wheelers, if somebody is holding, can continue holding. Uh, uh, within the four wheelers, uh, Again, m and show was uh, relatively better. Uh, and therefore, I think our take is uh, anybody holding on a stock like an MMM, they've continued doing well. Uh, but one actionable idea within the passenger vehicles might be Maruti on declines. Because uh, our take is that the management uh, is sounding very, very hopeful in terms of new launches, uh, the expectations of regaining market share, uh, the deepening of their after-sales service network. Uh, and obviously, I think the premium launches that are happening through their next outlets as well. Uh, so more outlets expected, uh, expectations in terms of more product pipelines, uh, maybe more in terms of the EV portfolio, hybrid portfolio in the near future as well. Uh, so I think uh, Maruti becomes one actionable idea within the passenger vehicle segment. And at some point in my opinion, Aisha, I think even the commercial uh, vehicle segment should show signs of recovery. Second half, um, I think the number should start uh, uh, building up uh, for the commercial market as well. Uh, and therefore, I think commercial players should be kept on your focus uh, as we head into the second half. But I think opportunities for commercial vehicles will come into the second half. So I think the only actionable idea that we find uh, plausible at the juncture might be Maruti on the lens.